right. I'm Mary Beth McGee. I do some Dread Central. Nice to meet both of you. So nice, nice to meet you. you. I love so all the masks here. on the on your back. Yes. 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 Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna I'm need good. a chainsaw up there. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. I know. I want. I'm like my goal. I really want to get a, a leather face one on here. I like the strangers is my favorite, so I have all three of them. But yes, Amazing. this is my building mask wall. Hi. Nice to Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited to chat with both of you um, about Chainsaw Man, um, one of my most anticipated animes of the year. So I'm very excited. But I guess my my first question for both of you, but I'll start with Ryan, is what was your relationship, if you had one, to Chainsaw Man before you started voicing Denji? Sure. Um, so I will show you whop, right back here. Oh, that hell yeah. Is- yeah, uh, for for many many moons, I was a big fan. I had actually read the the eleven volume run of of part one four times over before I oh, even wow. just but just because I loved it, and every time I read it, I was like, "There's new stuff in here. There's just layers to all of this." And um, it was the only time it was ever like, "Well, this is if this could ever be a possibility, this is the dream role." And uh, oh, cool. so that happened. <laughs> oh my god, that's incredible! Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. And uh, before I dig into that, Reagan, what about you? What was your relationship <laughs> with Chainsaw Man? I'm kind of the opposite. I didn't really have one. Uh, I knew, you know, that it was a thing, that it was really popular, that it was completely off the walls. Um, but I just had no idea what any of it was about when I uh, got the uh, auditions. Um, and so I was like, well, I better, you know, do a deep dive into this if I'm going to try for it. Cause you know, I've got to, I've got to know this character. Well, if I'm going to have a shot, which, uh, I did not think I had even a little bit of a shot, but, uh, you know, just shows, goes to show that, uh, you never really know, especially in this field. But, uh, when I dove into the story and especially the character of Aki, I'm just like, you know what, if I'm going to be anybody, I want to be that guy. <laughs> so, hmm. And it just worked out. So Ryan, as a fan of of Chainsaw Man before, what was your relationship kind of or your opinions about Denji before you started? Because Denji's a weird guy. We love him, but he's a little weird. That's, I was that's why we love him. <laughs> that's because why, exactly. That's I, I why think I think that's, you know, that's kind of it is. I think he was so refreshing and radically different from all of, you know, the protagonists that you're just, we're all used to. And I think he, yeah. he kind of like, where other people will like politely open the door, he throws a rock through the window and is like, I'm here, you know? And I think that's like, that's just incredibly endearing and charming in its own way and beautifully chaotic and relatable. And he just has so many layers for this like punk rock, you know, thing, you know, I I just instantly fell in love with him and and his chaos and his sensitivity and, and all of the things. It was, you know, even from that first chapter, you get a sense of how deep he is. You know, there is there is such an obvious level of depth, regardless of his ability to express it, you know, and I think that that's just really special to have in a character. Oh, yeah. And then what was it like then, you know, obviously you had this relationship with Denji's character from reading it and then becoming Denji. What was that like for you to become this character? And what was that process like for you to kind of occupy this mind space of this chaotic guy with some so very basic <laughs> motivations? We love him for it. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. It, it's so fun to get to tap into like a performance that is more primal than I'm used to getting to do you know it yeah. really is a lot of like letting my my nerve endings be a lot more raw and, and allowing things to be a lot more uh violent and sharp and you know for lack of better words uh just kind of throwing myself in a in a in a more open way than I'm normally allowed to and and even just in the ways that he expresses himself it's not it's it's not the normal gig you know like getting to say these things and do these things it is these when you you know when I got into wanting to become an actor this is why these are the kinds of stories why these are the kinds of characters and I don't necessarily mean like I want to be an actor because of Chainsaw Man I, I mean like because of stories like this and characters like this and getting to play the dimensions of this space and be challenged by them and like 
every moment is just another gift. Every time I get a new line, I'm like, I can't believe I get to say this or go to this place and, and then go to that place. And it's, it's like every, you know, you can ping pong all of the emotions and it's just a daily gift. Yeah. I mean, Dan, he's a walking intrusive thought personified. Yes. <laughs> and I love him for that. And honestly, we need more of that. But yeah. then Reagan, for you, Aki is so different from Denji, obviously. So what was it like for you to kind of doing this research and becoming this character and tapping into a character who I think is such a foil for Denji and is a much more kind of measured performance? What was that like for you to dig into Aki? I love that yeah. Aki's a foil for Denji. Mm. According to me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. According yeah. to me. This is yeah. a, no, that just popped into the dome. I so love I'm that. <laughs> I love that because everyone's phrasing it the other way. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's, it's absolutely true. Uh, Ryan uh, is talking about how Denji is so raw and so unrestrained. He's going to tell you exactly what he thinks every single time. And I think where Denji is raw, Aki is refined. Uh, he very much puts up uh, a sort of front. He puts up these emotional walls. Uh, he doesn't really, uh, you know, he is very careful about the way he looks and the way he portrays, uh, you know, he... Uh, interacts with the world and of course I know nothing about that so uh, it was very it was very difficult for me no uh, it, it's, just some, it's just something that I related to him so very uh, heavily on and it's part of why I uh, was so looking forward to uh, portraying this character because you see these walls that he puts up and uh, at different times in the series you get to you know sometimes you get to peek behind them and sometimes the walls just crash down around him and you see the very caring passionate person underneath them and it's a really beautiful thing every time hell yeah and so okay so the devils are created by like what you're what you fear what is the devil that you would be most terrified to face if you lived in the world of chainsaw man uh, reagan i'm gonna go with you first since you're shaking your head just just to just keep bugs away from me please okay Cool. I hate bugs so much. <laughs> that Men, in, Men in Black is one of the worst horror movies for me. I just, really? Oh my god. Oh my god. Just oh, keep that thing away. God. <laughs> okay, cool. Good to know. Noted. And then yeah. Brian, um, what about you? <laughs> I'm gonna say this is actually this just popped into my head because I just realized how much it freaks me out. I'm gonna say the mold devil. Because mold is so gross, yeah. Mold is so gross, and it's you just don't think so about mold. It's, it's like so it's like inherently dangerous to like everything. It is just like yeah, that mess you up. <laughs> yeah. So Ryan, I'm gonna. I see the um, Overlook Hotel print on on your desk there. So I'm assuming <laughs> that you are also a horror fan. Oh but yeah. Regan, are you also a horror fan? Uh, I was not for a long time, uh, but my roommate uh, is very, very much a horror fan, and he's very much gotten me into it these past couple of years. Uh, you know, every October, almost every night, we try and watch a different horror movie, and it's a, it's, and it's a wonderful bonding experience for the two of us, um, finding out what scares the other and what doesn't. And uh, sometimes, you know, the movies are great, sometimes they're not, but either way, it's just a wonderful way for us to uh, get to know one another. Oh, I love I that. Yeah, what are some of the favorites you've seen at least this past this past October? Then mm -hmm. uh, there was one we saw. It was called a uh, Dead Stream. Uh, oh yeah, and, oh, yeah. I love Dead Stream. I it's... really, really enjoyed that. And uh, last year, I think our favorite was this one called Caveat. Uh, <gasps> it's... Caveat is horrifying. Oh, oh I don't know if my I've god! Okay, noted. oh that crawl space scene will stick with oh. me till I die. You know what? That's another thing. I do not like tight spaces. That is mm. a that is a thing. Mm. So caveats on Shutter. If you have Shutter, okay, um, it's really good. It's like atmospheric, slow burny, but really weird. That, well, that's my kind of. That's yeah. my kind of dope. Okay, we're all on the same yeah. page here. But then, so Ryan, what, how did you get into horror? And I'm asking about horror because I feel like Chainsaw Man is a horror, to me is horror. I mean, come on. But so, so I'm just like curious about your relationship to the genre in general. You know, it, it's funny when I was a kid, I was terrified. Um, but it was that weird thing where I couldn't, it's, you know, like you're scared, but you can't look away. And uh -huh. oh, yeah. I, um, being just a big fan of movies from like infancy, I was so obsessed with just even just visuals. I mean, from alien to, you know, you name it, 
these things scared the crap out of me as a kid, but I couldn't look away. And I was so fascinated by it. And they would give me crazy nightmares and I couldn't sleep. And it was, I was a wreck. But as I got older and older, I started to appreciate the craft behind it and notice the stories behind the scares and all of that. And, and that's when I really started to fall in love with it. And I think psychological horror, like the shining and, and that kind of stuff really, um, became my bread and butter. And I think it's what ultimately with Chainsaw Man is what like it taps into those horror elements that I love is it's as much as it is like brutal and gruesome and all of that, that's not even what the horror of the show is. The horror is the psychological element of what the fear based elements of what all of that means. And, and this scale of power of what human fear can do to people and, all of that like it's it's such a it's such a heady concept that is so much yeah. more nightmarish than the violence and i think that's like the kind of horror i i gravitate to more than like just the you know like because i never yeah. love jump scares you know i don't like yeah. feel like oh, oh damn you know like i love being creeped out and genuinely disturbed and and shown something upsetting and i think you know chainsaw man's horror is kind of like so relatable because it's it's based on real things you know it's yeah it exacerbates them but it's not like they're these imaginary concepts they're very real and very scary well and i also think what's so scary about chainsaw man is talks about like chains of use of power to like of yeah. use of not, not power the character but power like in general we see with yeah. denji is such a says like is affected by that system so much and the reason he's doing this is because he just wants to have some kind of autonomy so i think something interesting about chainsaw man is that invoking of that too yep. which is it's the scary. it's the horror they're not even directly talking about absolutely exactly yeah yeah and um so ryan you kind of touched on this a little bit um when you were talking about kind of becoming denji but uh, this question is for both of you and i'll start with reagan what in becoming aki and voicing aki what were there any unique challenges faced in working on Chainsaw Man that you hadn't see kind of had to deal with before in previous voice acting roles? Um, well, one of the big ones that I had to overcome was this uh, kind of fear of um, people's expectations for it. Mm -hmm. um, I knew it was mm -hmm. so popular and, uh, I, you know, at first I was like, oh my God, I'm in Chainsaw Man. It's like, oh my God, I'm in Chainsaw Man. Um, <laughs> so uh, that was a big thing to kind of let the go expectancy of devil ex yes, exactly <laughs> um, <laughs> having to let go of that fear of disappointing people and just uh think uh thinking of it for the from the perspective of uh, i already love this character of aki and i love the uh, journey that it goes on and it's more about uh uh introducing the world to this wonderful guy that i've gotten to know instead of uh being on stage in front of the entire world in my underwear. Okay. <laughs> and then Ryan, what about you? I know you talked about kind of the chaotic character of Denji, but was there a challenge, like a unique, another unique challenge for you in tackling Denji you hadn't faced before in other roles? Well, Denji's definitely out there in his underwear. That's for sure. Yeah. He um, you know, that, he that is, yeah. At all. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just like, um, I, I think, you know, we had, Ray and I had, had talked about it and, and it's been brought up a few times. And I, for me, it was more sense of responsibility, you know, to, to do the character that I care so deeply about as much justice as I could and just be true to him. And as much as I want to make everybody happy, knowing that's impossible. Um, and I think that, you know, the the actor part of my brain was like, the best way to do the best job is to know that I'm just going to give everything to Denji. It's, you know, it's not about, you know, as much as I look into what the fans are thinking about and feeling about, and I want them all to be happy. I can't let every opinion shift how I'm going to perform a thing. I have to let Denji and his journey and his story dictate how I perform. And I just want to be true to him and give him all the love that he deserves because he is this crazy chaotic puppy dog that I think, you know, deserves all the love in the world. <laughs> well, 
Brian and Reagan, thank you so much for chatting with me about Thank Chains you so, so much. Such a pleasure. Oh, we appreciate you so Absolutely. much. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you.